Thank you. We'll uh, soon begin the uh, planning committee meeting of Akron City Council. We'll be ready when the clerk is. Sarah Biviano is our clerk. Ready when you are, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. We'll begin the planning committee meeting of Akron City Council. Roll call, please. Fusco? Aye. Kamer? Aye. Connor? Aye. Baylor? Councilwoman Baylor, I can see you. Aye. Thank you. And Mosley. Okay, you have all committee members present except for Councilwoman Mosley. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to accept a, a, a motion to approve the minutes of the previously held meeting. Thank you. All those in, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, thank you against. The ayes have it. Uh, we have one item that's up for a public hearing this afternoon, and the process is this. What we'll do is we will first receive a uh, report from the planning department. After that, our clerk, Sarah Biviano, will swear in those individuals that wish to testify this afternoon. Okay? She'll swear you in. Um, after that, we'll open up the public hearing, and we will re res respectfully request that you provide for us your name and address, and we'll give you an opportunity to address the committee. Um, after that, we'll uh, close the public hearing portion. We'll open it up to questions from the committee members. Then we'll also open it up to questions from all of the council members. Okay. We'll repeat that process this evening at 7 o'clock. The only main difference is what's going to happen this evening is, is the committee will make a recommendation to all of council so that uh, it, it'll either be in favor, it could be against, or it could be to take time and to refer an item, meaning that we would not vote on it necessarily this evening, but at a later date. So that's the procedures that we're going to be following today. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, certainly appreciate it. We always appreciate whenever we get uh, interest. Uh, with that, um, the first item that's up for a public hearing, um, uh, Clerk Viviano, could you please read that in? This is an ordinance authorizing a conditional use to establish a restaurant microbrewery at 1221 to 1225 West Market Street. Thank you. Mr. Antonucci? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Committee. Uh, Jamie Delapaz is a lessee of a property at the northeast intersection of West Market Street and Twin Oaks Road. The property contains a large two-story structure, also known as a Karkoff Mansion, along with a two-story carriage house structure. Petitioner is requesting permission to reuse the property as a premium dining and event space on the first floor with lodging for guests and rooms on the second floor of the mansion. In addition, they would like to redevelop the carriage house into a microbrewery with an indoor and outdoor restaurant. The mansion and carriage house were constructed in 1917. The site was conditionally approved for limited business use and was occupied from about 1984 through 2022 with law offices. Currently, both structures are unoccupied. The mansion's footprint is composed of different sized rooms on the first level that can accommodate intimate groups for business or social events. In the morning, it would serve as an exclusive breakfast and brunch gathering place for patrons, while in the afternoon and evening, the space would be prepared and used as a limited white tablecloth restaurant establishment featuring European recipes prepared by a renowned chef. The large back patio would be used for outdoor dining. Second floor rooms would be set up to accommodate overnight visitors or out of town guests. The carriage house would be converted into a microbrewery featuring a restaurant with indoor and outdoor eating spaces. Proposed changes to the site are anticipated to be minimal, thus letting it retain the existing character of the property. The site is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. In addition, the petitioner agrees to have the property listed as a local historic landmark. The petitioner does not anticipate making any changes or additions to the exterior of the mansion. A covered patio, however, uh, addition, covered patio addition to the front elevation of the carriage house will be necessary to accommodate an outdoor eating area. Access to the site will be through the existing driveway along West Market Street. 
The driveway entrance will be widened to provide easier access for vehicles entering and exiting the property. Currently, there are uh, parking spaces for 25 vehicles, although the parking will be restriped to accommodate about 50 vehicles. If necessary, parking could be added uh, elsewhere on the property. The conversion of the Karkoff Mansion and Carriage House to a limited retail establishment with a restaurant and inn should not negatively impact the surrounding area. The site is located along a major arterial. The large property and grounds are removed from residential properties. The impact of noise and light intrusion upon adjacent properties should be minimal. While this property has been utilized and maintained over the years as office space, it is not anticipated that the property will be occupied with offices anytime soon. Recent events have slowed office development for the foreseeable future, as is evidenced by downtown vacancies. The redevelopment of the site fulfills an objective of the Land Use and Development Guide Plan by allowing for a creative reuse of the site while encouraging the preservation of the historic mansion and carriage house. The Office of Integrated Development, Planning Staff, and Planning Commission recommend approval subject to conditions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Antonucci. <coughs> At this time, uh, I'd like to ask our uh, clerk, uh, Ms. Viviano, to please swear in those individuals that wish to testify before the committee. If you could please stand. If you're here to testify on this public hearing, could you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give will be the truth? If so, please say, I do. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we'll open up the public hearing portion and we'll ask if there's anyone here wishing to speak in favor of the uh, proposed conditional use request um, located on um, 1221, 1225 West Market Street. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? This is in favor. Hello, uh, my name is Joe Scassio. Um, I'm the current owner of 1225 uh, West Market Street. Obviously, I'm in favor. I don't know if this is, was I supposed to talk now or just general Sure, public? absolutely, yeah. Okay, um, so there, it's basically two separate uh, things that we're asking for here as far as the, and just in, in reading, the, the short blurb, um, see if I can find it here. Uh, it's, it's basically a, a boutique microbrewery uh, for the carriage house and then a, a high-end um, restaurant, a low volume restaurant um, for 1225. Um, it's something, uh, it's not a, not a real common. Um, it's 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 a low volume, high end uh, restaurant um, that would serve breakfast. It would shut down, uh, and then uh, reservations only for the evening uh, for for dining. And the tables would be turned just once. Not it's not a it's not a high volume on any stretch. It's it's unique. I mean. It's, uh, some things like this are in New York City and various places. Um, so uh, obviously we're excited about it. And uh, it, is, it is on West Market Street. It's not, uh, you know, there'll be no traffic going from West Market to Twin Oaks. Uh, it's, it's basically in and out uh, on, on West Market Street. And so I, I, I just obviously think it would be a unique uh, uh, thing for Akron and, and those other, um, we have the brewery, uh, brewer here and Alan Burge and the owner of, of the business um, that they could speak more to some of the, some of the details. Um, um, so I don't know if you guys want to, this is Alan Burge, our architect. Very good. Thank you. Yes, sir. 
Uh, my name is Alan Burge, Alan Burge Architecture. I think uh, a lot of you know me and know our work around the city of Akron. Um, one of the reasons that uh, they approached us was to uh, do historic tax credits for this project, which um, obviously we're familiar with and do a lot of. The beauty of the historic tax credits, which should alleviate uh, some people's fears that uh, we will be doing the project in a manner that really uh, restores and uh, celebrates the architecture that's there. That is the old Kirkhoff Mansion, um, part of Akron's history, uh, which Mike, uh, who's uh, going to run the brewery, will talk about a little bit. He has some great ideas for um, how to integrate that historical uh, references into his operation. Um, so the other thing that I would add that uh, by doing a historic tax credit project, uh, this obviously uh, goes to the state of Ohio, uh, State of Historic Office of Preservation, or SHPO, uh, for review. So um, there will be a review by the state of this project, and obviously we want to use and celebrate the architecture that's there, do something really beautiful. Uh, I think Joe kind of talked about the nuances of what is trying to be accomplished with the restaurant. Um, this is not, a, again, a high volume thing. This is something that's really going to use the architecture and use the site um, in largely in its existing context. Um, I think it's also important to note that um, really this passage of this will give this property its best chance for some investment um, right now that uh, otherwise probably wouldn't happen. So thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of this development um, on West Market Street, 1221, 1225? Yes, sir. My name is Mike Piazza. I'm here to speak about the brewery portion of the project in the carriage house. And I think the word that Joe had mentioned is the historical significance in what we're trying to achieve here. With these buildings have it stood for over 100 years, we'd like to provide that um, depth of knowledge to the people of Akron and explain the history that many might not know about how those buildings were built and why they were built and how they continue to stand and are part of the historical register. So weaving that into the concept that we want to bring, you know, the libations, the food, it's all going to speak the story of who the original builders were, who the owners were, and where the property itself has come to this day and how we can intertwine, intertwine that into the history of Akron and broadcast that forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Hello. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Um, my name is Abby Drennan. I live at 81 Mayfield Avenue. Um, I wanted to speak in favor of the conditional use. Um, I'm actually really excited to hear all this information about the history and how that'll be a really big focus of this project and um, the eventual <laughs> execution of it as well as um, a part of the experience when you're there to experience this restaurant and this brewery. Um, I really had just three quick things I wanted to hit on. Um, I think a lot of people have already talked about um, we're taking an old historic Akron property and giving it a new life. Or not we, I'm not involved, I'm just here to speak in favor. but. Um, I'm really excited about that. I think that far too often all of our historic buildings get unfortunately t torn down or they just fall to disrepair. And so this is a really amazing opportunity for an old building um, within a, it's, it's near Portage Country Club, right? So we already have Portage Country Club. So let's build on the Portage Country Club kind of vibe of it all and then add a, biz a business, a restaurant that's more accessible to everyone who is not a member to Portage Country Club. Um, my other point was that um, once this is established, once if it is established, um, there'll be an empl extra employment of Akronites who will be here to work and to renovate the space. I know we're experiencing some difficult times in Akron right now, and I think this is just another great investment for the city as well as um, our constituents and neighbors within the city to have an opportunity to stay and work somewhere and be a part of something in Akron. Um, and then on top of that, a little bit to build, um, just the investment in Akron and the Akron small business community, I think is incredibly important here. Um, so this investment will help to offset future needs um, for possible tax increases. So this business and its employees will pay city income tax and this additional city revenue will help as the city adjusts to the impacts of work from home and office jobs leaving the city, as well as the exhaustion of COVID relief funds. 
So I'm just, I don't want us to turn away new jobs and investment in Akron, and I would really encourage um, this project to be in, viewed in favor, in favor favorably. Anyway, um, that was all, thank you. Thank you, thank you for your time. Um, anyone else wishing to speak in favor? <coughs> Excuse me. Hello everyone, my name is Jamie De La Paz. I'm currently uh, leasing the property with option to buy it. Um, I'm uh, living right now in the house next door. And when I saw this property empty and how beautiful it's inside, and it's some, quite a bit uh, what it takes to maintain and, and keep the property without revenue, it's, it's getting tougher and tougher. And I see opportunity, a brilliant opportunity based on how the property looks and where is the property located, and a, a, a good opportunity to create something at least what I'm looking for, if, I, if it's not a uh, profitable, at least if they make up for the expense to keep it up and uh, to keep it, uh, it's a big property to keep maintain the, uh, the whole exterior, what most people see, but also interior, keep the heat over the winter. It's, it's, uh, it's an expense that you don't, I don't have to carry. So if I can pass on into a business that can they can take over the uh, expenses and have the pleasure of creating something that uh, has, it has, hasn't been created yet. So to me, it'd be something that uh, I'd be proud if I can make this work and I can pass this on generations and they can something that has, I have other things to do and I'm successful in what I'm doing. So I'm looking, this is more a passion, more than trying to get advantage of something so I'm, I think it's, it's an opportunity for me to give something back to the community. Thank you. Thank you. What's your address again, sir? I'm sorry. Your address? Uh, 50 Twin Oaks. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Anyone? Okay, very good. Anyone wishing to speak against? If you can please provide first your name and address. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Brian Thomas, and thanks for the opportunity to, um, to address this uh, petition. Um, I live at 39 Maplewood. I'm about a block away from the, from the site. And I do appreciate the desire to preserve and uh, to use these structures. And uh, it, it sounds very nice, but I do think that it's not advisable to allow an alcohol and entertainment facility in that particular spot. The immediate neighbors are almost all uh, long-term care facilities. Highland Square Nursing and Rehabilitation is uh, directly up against the carriage house structure. Um, Rocky Knoll Ohio Living is diagonal across the street. And <clears throat> directly across is Our Lady the Elms Mother House which in case you're not aware, it houses a large um, nursing and rehab facility for the Dominican Sisters of Peace. And the Elms Elementary School is diagonal across the intersection of Twin Oaks, and two doors down also is a, a couple hundred feet away is the First Assembly Preschool. Um, so that's, that's my primary concern. I'm a little uncertain about the parking situation. It sounds like they've got some contingencies in place, but I do think a larger event could be an impetus for people parking at other sites in, on the street, mm -hmm. including Twin Oaks Drive, which allows parking in the eastbound lane, or uh, along the eastbound lane, but then doesn't leave enough space for you to get by a car that's parked there without crossing the center line. So, you know, parking on Twin Oaks would be a concern, as would be, you know, parking in other facilities if, mm -hmm. if they need overflow. So I don't know what the plan is for that, but for those reasons, I don't think that this project would advance um, the public good. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Thank you. Anyone else? Hello. My name is Elizabeth Kishchen. I live at 71 Mayfield Avenue. I'm against the conditional zoning of 1225 West Market Street. 
The zoning code for conditional use states in Section F, an establishment will not involve conditions of operation that will be detrimental to any person or property or the general, general welfare by reason of excessive production of traffic, noise, smoke, fumes, glare, or odors. The traffic. I assume most of you have a phone and use apps like Google Maps when achieving directions to a destination. Anyone coming from the east or southeast of 1225 will be directed down the residential streets of either North Rose or Mayfield Avenue. 1225 sits on the same block as Mayfield, Maplewood, and Twin Oaks, which are all residential. This traffic and alcohol consumption of drivers coming and going from 1 to 1, I'm sorry, from 1225 directly affects us. We have about 25 children living on Mayfield Avenue and many grandchildren who visit. This definitely puts their welfare at risk. Now considering the noise, smoke, fumes, glare, and odors, I don't know if any of you have been to a microbrewery, have you ever been around it while they're brewing their beer, roasting hops or malts? That produces a lot of odor and fumes. A restaurant, bar, and brewery with outside patio will provide considerable noise for our neighbors. Headlights from cars coming and going, music, bands, late nights, parties. These are the things that will directly affect our neighborhood and contradict the term for the conditional use. Mayfield Avenue, Maplewood, Twin Oaks, our neighbors on Market Street have worked to hard to achieve a true community. We have street parties, Easter egg hunts, Halloween, ice cream socials. When somebody on our street needs pushed out of the snow, we're there. We share, we help, we support, we celebrate together. We are an Akron success story. Young families have invested in these very old homes, most older and with as much history as 1225, and have been fixing and preserving them. We are all aware of the problems the downtown area of Highland Square has been having over the past year. If conditional use for 1225 is approved, I am sure with the hope that 50 Twin Oaks will soon follow because they're both owned by the same entity, our street will be enveloped in between downtown Highland Square and yet another alcohol establishment. Our family, our community, our neighborhood's welfare should not come second to lining a few people's pockets. That is why I'm asking that you do not accept the change in zoning for 1225. Akron City Council members, I have gotten tons of mailings from you. One of the headlines things, make our neighborhood safer. Adding another alcohol establishment right there in a residential area, school, nursing home, everything else, not safe. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to? I don't know how I'm gonna follow that. <laughs> that was amazing. I mean, it was so thorough. But I do want to, I'm Lisa Sarkis. I live at 7 Mayfield Avenue. Thank you. Uh, with my husband, Robert Pope. Um, we've owned that home for 11 years. We're both retired. Um, I am decisively also opposed to this proposal. Um, I, first of all, I, I think that it does sound conceptually lovely. This area of Twin Oaks and West Market is already a complicated intersection. The fact that Our Lady of the Elms School is right there, a grade school, and uh, a, a school, a high school also, but a grade school. Mm -hmm. um, to me, it seems like a fundamentally um, unsound idea. <laughs> It's already a school zone. To put a bar, a microbrewery, however upscale this place is going to be, and as I said, it, it's certainly somewhere that I would go if it were located at a place that could accommodate it. Um, I, I think it's fundamentally unsound, I think it's wrong-headed, and I think it's irresponsible, frankly. I really do. Um, noise is going to be a factor in the neighborhood. Um, if, if this is an outdoor establishment, especially, there is going to be an increase in noise. We have, when we have poor trucker and a lot of people come, now I know that's, that's a really large event venue, but when, whenever there is something going on in the area, Mayfield is a parking lot, make no mistake. It is a parking lot. There are cars up and down our street 
and it's fine because we're ready for it. But we don't want to be ready for it, tw you know, 24/7 or at least seven days a week or whatever this is going to be. This is not what we signed up for. Uh, this is a residential area with houses, lots of kids, um, renters, businesses, churches, schools. In fact, I spoke with Mark Pruitt, Reverend at um, St. Paul's Episcopal, who did, didn't even know about this. And yes, they're down the street, but from right now, from Mustard Seed to uh, like Harcourt, Melbourne, that is an area that has no such commercial enterprise like this one, okay? It, it, it's not there, it's, and you're introducing, so you're squeezing it, you know, you're making it further, you're setting, also setting a precedent that I don't think should be set. Um, so before you make this decision, I please consider how it will affect us who already are there, you know? and the character of our neighborhoods there, around there, because I feel like I, this is a lovely idea, but Mr. De La Paz should put this somewhere where, in Akron, where that will already accommodate it, you know? Not change us so we can accommodate these, these business interests. And, um, so that's why I'm against this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Hi, good yeah. afternoon. My name's Jeanette Foster. Um, you all got my dissertation over the weekend um, regarding this particular motion and um, application. And I am firmly against this proposal. Um, I'm not going to read all of the reasons that I emailed you all. I hope you will please take the time to read it. It was very thoughtfully prepared, both with my comments as well as comments from our entire neighborhood. I maintain our directory of contacts for the neighborhood and have polled the neighbors, and an overwhelming almost 90% of our neighbors disapprove of this particular petition. Again, for most of the reasons that I've outlined um, to you. I also want to point out that even though the application shows the map to be very centered with some commercial entities around it, none of those commercial entities are restaurants or bars. And if we shift the map out and change the center of the focus for that map, the highlighted yellow portions are all residential. Residential is the majority of the surrounding area, and we need to protect and respect the homeowners of that region. I also want to point out that in, in addition to all of the people who I had conversations with regarding the disapproval of this petition, I'm holding at least 25 text messages of people who have sent me messages, and I just want to pick up on a couple of their points great a bunch of drunks wandering through our neighborhood pardon me i would like the zoning to remain as is keep the commercial businesses in highland square downtown and other more appropriate locations we have plenty of establishments for restaurants and bars already in existence in the immediate area. We don't see any benefit to our neighborhood. We want to support our neighbors who live much closer and are against this and would vote no. It's inappropriately close to three nursing home facilities, also to Georgetown and other Twin Oaks homes. We realize that the property will never be residential, but we're not happy with the initial proposal. I think in my out letter that I sent to you all, we would be very open to considering other uses for that property, just not restaurant and bars. You can call it fancy, you can call it white tablecloth, you can call it premium, you can call it whatever you want, but when that fails, or if it fails, it opens the door for that to become something else that's a bar, a restaurant with no 
no monitoring, no restrictions, and then pretty soon we have another situation like we have in, in the Highland Square area. Um, the neighbors are definitely against this. I am against this. I think we need to definitely take time. I think the process missed a lot of input. I don't know if that's intentional. Uh, when you only give notice to adjacent properties, I think that is, that is a catastrophe when you're looking at introducing these kind of um, operations within a residential neighborhood. We have lived on our street for 30 years and we have fought the hard fight for a lot of things to happen, both for the good and to keep out the bad. And we will continue to support our neighbors and our processes to make sure that that doesn't continue to happen. So in closing, I urge you respectfully to disapprove the current petition. Let's take time to figure out the better solution for these historic properties that do not impact the quality of life of the long-lived residents who maintain these areas and pay property taxes and create their livelihoods. Thank you. Thank you. What was your address? I'm sorry. 104 Mayfield Avenue. Thank you. According to Google Maps, my door is about a thousand feet from the back side of this property to the back side of my property as the crow flies. So I'm very close. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to make comment? Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm going to get a little bit more personal here. And I want to start by, I, I'm, my name's Patty Kaminsky, and this is my husband, Dr. Rob Kaminsky. And we are here to speak in opposition to this. Um, I want you to know a little bit about us. I'm meeting some of our neighbors for the first time, and I want to thank Donna Marie Kaminsky and Abigail and Jeanette all for taking the ball and running with it, building a, an email list for, to keep us all connected. Um, <clears throat> but Rob and I met at University of Wisconsin where I was a heart transplant nurse when he came to do his cardiac surgery residency. Pardon? Okay. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so we go back a ways. Uh, we moved to Akron in 1981 when he finished his residency and started his cardiac surgery practice in Akron. And some of you may have even been in his care or their parents may have been in his care. I know there are several people in the neighborhood who have been there and done that. Um, <clears throat> but we moved to Akron in 81. We lived for a year and a half on in the Mull Avenue condominiums. And across the hall from our apartment, across the little breezeway, was the apartment of Mrs. Rachel Schrank, Harry P. Schrank's widow. And so we had the pleasure of meeting her. She was quite the character. But um, she told me, I came back from jogging one day, which I actually could do back then, um, and she asked me where, where I used to run. And I said, well, Mrs. Schrank, I found my dream home. My father knows best house. And some people may be too young to have any idea what that means, but it's a TV show from back in the day. And I told her the address. And she, uh, she was a chain smoker, had a heck of a tremor, and she lit one cigarette from another and she said, my dear, I still own a partial mortgage on that house. Because she lived there with Harry P. Schrank for 20 some years. And it has quite the history as well. I actually have a picture of the house. Um, it was built in 1925, and I have a picture of a Model T Ford parked in front of it. And um, that big sycamore tree, if anybody's familiar with our property, well, there's a huge sycamore that's growing in the middle of the drive. I have a picture of that tree, uh, like a little stalk, stemmed up with, you know, twined up so it didn't fall over. And, um, and pardon? 120, we're 120 Twin Oaks Road. Big white brick house with green shutters. Um, but we've been there now on Twin Oaks for 41 years and <clears throat> in its home. And as blue collar kids working as hard as we did to get there, we could never have believed that we would own a house like that. But I wanted to mention, especially maybe to Mr. Antonucci, the public notices that came out. <clears throat> I was a little distraught that the notice that was, um, that was dated March 10th and uh, it said it went out in the mail March 10th, arrived at our house on March 17th. 
unfortunately our mail comes at one and two in the afternoon and the meeting was at nine in the morning so there went my first chance to speak up on this so there's got to be a better way to get the message out sooner so people can react I when I got the letter I was flabbergasted at first I didn't think at the age we are and having just retired eight years ago that we'd be facing this but I immediately called my daughter Dina who lives at 60 Mayfield Avenue she hadn't gotten the letter I called my next-door neighbor Donna Marie Kaminsky spelled differently and um, Donna's not one to sit back and just wait for something to happen she got on the stick and um, between her and like I said Abigail and Jeanette they generated a, a pretty good email list when I looked at the contact information for the people that I figure you figure needed to be notified by the the public that needed to be notified um, there were the businesses obviously Portage Country Club the church Rocky Knowles uh, um, Our Lady of the Elms etc um, and then as far as neighbors or residential people I noticed the addresses there were roads that run through Georgetown apartments that were on there um, the people who live in Portage Close which are the very nice condos directly across the street from 50 from Chateau 50 or the Firestone Mansion um, and on Twin Oaks the only, the only addresses were mine I mean ours and um, this little bungalow right next to us um, which is 116 it's owned by um, Horvath and that's the only people um, no one on Mayfield no one on on uh, Maplewood got the messages and um, I thought that was a bit a little bit strange but although they've got a, a better buffer than we do because they've got that large unity I don't even know it's a private residence now I believe but that big property that has that big unity brick building on it um, they have that as a buffer zone before Mayfield and, and Maplewood whereas this pretty much impacts us probably most directly of all because it's our backyard um, and the more I thought about it um, I, I I don't know I, I I was surprised to see when Mr. Antonucci put in his report from the meeting on the 17th at 9 in the morning that uh, it was recommended by the by the Commission to approve to approve this and I thought how many of us actually got a chance to say anything about it so it's a little upset by that but as far as our situation personally we and and I you know what I'm not I'm not given to um, hysterics and hyperbolic paranoia but as I told Nancy the other day that song Joni Mitchell's song kept going through my head pave paradise and put up a parking lot that's what I started thinking about um, because in our situation on twin, 120 Twin Oaks there is an access road that runs from Market Street to Twin Oaks now that access road is owned by the church and we actually went through a, a several month period where they opened it up to their parishioners to use to get to church and what we found was we could sit out on our, our side deck and have morning coffee on a Sunday in our bathrobe and we had people kind of slowly creeping down that road and <laughs> And next thing we know, they're stopping their cars and getting out, taking pictures of the house. It's, hi. Uh, it was very awkward, but um, that, that we had to put the kibosh on. We called the church and uh, they closed the gate to it again. So that, but that's a worry of ours that possibly you, you turn into that um, driveway going to the church and you could keep on going straight down Twin Oaks and go right in between our house and the other Kaminsky's so not something we really want to try to do again that's for sure um, and on the south side of our property which is basically our backyard is the Galt Mansion also owned by um, the church now that they use it I believe as a daycare center 
which is, that's very close to where they want the microbrewery to be, which I think is a pretty terrible idea. Um, and that is our backyard. So if the church decided to sell the Galt Mansion, for all I know, we, they could pave, put up a parking lot right in our backyard. Um, on the west side, which is where this bungalow, the Horbath's bungalow is, uh, right next door to Chateau 50, um, they have a shared driveway, which, you know, when they come in, it's a Y, it goes off to Chateau 50, or it goes straight ahead for the, the chateau. But if, uh, if by chance, if, uh, <laughs> if they decided to talk um, Mr. Horvath into selling his little bungalow, we could have parking over there too. And that would be parking that comes in from Twin Oaks, or it's even possible to finagle a driveway from the, from the um, proposed restaurant to that area where that bungalow sits right now. So in other words, Rob and I would find ourselves pretty much corralled. You know, if any one of those sides, the only place we're open is on Twin Oaks, and that's our driveway. But, um, but Twin Oaks has always, by the way, been no parking. And Rob and I had many, many large parties over the years with um, our involvement with various charities and that sort of thing. But we always followed the rules. We always hired a valet parker. We made arrangements with the church and Portage Country Club um, to park in other places. And if we had a small enough party at all fit in our driveway, that was fine. Otherwise, we had to have valet parking. Um, and it's been rumored that the church is in favor of this and, and has offered, from what I understand, to have overflow parking at the church for the restaurant and the microbrewery. Now that's cutting it real close as far as backing up into our property. Um, so I'm not sure where, where we stand on any of that as far as if anybody's got ideas about building parking lots and finagling some other way to park closer to our house. Um, well, we will work on answers for you, Ms. Kaminsky. I hope so. Um, the pa and the idea of the patio, patio yeah. dining, um, I agree totally, Liz put it well. Um, the noise from that, as it is right now, I can lay up in my bedroom on the second floor and look out and I can see the traffic on Market Street. So if we had cars coming in and out of there, um, the occasional car that comes in now, it, does, it shines light across our ceiling, you know how headlights go. Um, so if we had a lot more of that, that would probably not be a good situation. You know what, I'm all for historic preservation, obviously, because we own a beautiful historic home. Um, so absolutely, I'm all for uh, the preservation, but I like a great glass of wine. I like white table upscale dining. But that's not to say that the people who go to that restaurant are necessarily going to be nice, quiet people either. Um, Mrs. Schrank told me many stories about the parties that took place at the Firestone Mansion. And they were pretty, sometimes, raucous and downright <laughs> crazy. Okay. Um, so it doesn't always mean that it's going to be a, a quiet, nice thing. So. Um, so Rob and I pretty much are sticking to our um, description of ourselves that in this situation, we remain NIMBYs, not in my backyard. Okay. okay. Thank you so much for your comments. Is there anyone else wishing to make comment? Anyone else? Even questions, if you just have questions, don't have to necessarily take a stance. I'm, but you can ask questions. I'm at 135 Mayfield and- Thank you. Um, thank you for reaching out. I think the Kaminsky's, I agree with everything that's been said before. I think that what will ultimately affect the people on Twin Oaks who own property is because of where their property sits, their property value on resale will go down. Now maybe you're not going to sell in the next five years, but it's a reduction of a property value, not an increase of property value. Um, I do have a question for Mr. Delpaz. Um, do you own, you said you owned El Campesino? 
in Stowe? Yes. You own the one in Stowe? Yes. Okay. How many? So what I would like to know is, well, there's a couple, one thing. Um, most restaurants are not viable after five years. 80% um, of them fail. Um, while we were sitting here, I looked up the health violations for your restaurant in Stowe, and you have multiple violations over the course of several years. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of wondering if that's a track record, you know, even though you have 20 years, if, if that's a track record that we can address, you guys can address, uh, in, in going through all, all of Mr. Delapaz's uh, properties. Thank Every, you. Yeah, everything else I'm with. And my house also is a historic house as well. It was built in 1911 by one of the first managers of a, of a rubber company, which a manager back then would have been a president. Um, and we've worked really hard to, um, to restore and, and fix up whatever is needed for that house. So I feel my property value is affected as well. Uh, Mr. Antonucci, um, I would also agree with, I, I think that council has to address the way notices are given. I don't know if it's by zip code, but certainly not to adjacent properties. I'm not sure how you guys would do that, but I think it's, it's a well needed review of how this process is done, not by us hearing about it from our neighbors. Thank Thanks. you. Anyone else wishing to make comment? Yeah, good afternoon. My name is Mun Dang, and I live at the 105 Mayfield Avenue. I've been there a very long time, more than 30 years. And I'm here to support for my neighbor. And uh, what I want to say to you this afternoon, they have already said everything. I agree with them. Thank you. So I, I, we, I oppose you know, this proposal. And I want to ask you, please, uh, when you consider this you know, proposal, uh, proposal, please put yourself in our situation. We've been there, very nice neighborhood, and very quiet, and you know, the, we care for each other. And I mean, you know, we don't want anything changed and to bring you know, noisy and alcohol, traffic problem, and all this. So I'm here to ask you, please consider our neighborhood, you know, put yourself in our situation when you consider this proposal. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to make any comments? Good afternoon, uh, Chair Fusco and members of council. Uh, my name is Sandra Kurt. I live at 140 Mayfield Avenue. Um, I'm here to speak against the uh, conditional use. I'd like to thank all my neighbors for showing up and uh, being very um, descriptive and uh, passionate about um, what we want our neighborhood to remain. Um, I just want to add a couple of things. One is that uh, microbrewery, in addition to the smells and such that, um, that Liz mentioned, is I believe they use a lot of water and they have a lot of um, refuse or, or byproducts that come off of that. And if you think about the other microbreweries in town, uh, you think about Hopping Frog, which is over by the, um, the air dock, or you think about uh, Arche, which is Arche and Missing uh, Mountain that are both in an old rubber factory. Those are all industrial areas, right? They're not residential neighborhoods. And so I'm concerned about even the impact perhaps to our neighborhood sewer system um, from uh, having a microbrewery there. So I uh, just, um, I also really value the solitude in my backyard. And as public servants, <laughs> you guys get a lot more grief than I do as clerk. <laughs> um, but I know that you also value your, your privacy and your home as your, uh, your safe place to get away and, and have a little place to renew yourself to go back out there and do the work of the people. And uh, that's what I consider my back porch, my backyard to be. And I really don't want it to be impacted by other people enjoying themselves um, in a way that uh, is negative impact on our neighborhood. So thank you very much. I appreciate your public service. 
Uh, I truly do. I've been there, and and uh, it's it's not for the weak. <laughs> and um, thank so thank you very much for what you do, and thank you for listening to us today. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra Kurt. Anyone else wishing to make any more uh, further com comments? Anyone else wishing to make further comments? I do believe we have someone else uh, online uh, participating via Zoom, uh, Sarah Viviano. Yes, we have Megan Lugo here to participate. <coughs> Go ahead, Megan. Um, thanks so much, uh, Megan Lugo, 45 Avenue. Um, my neighbor said, Assembly, first assembly. 
family. These are all other places that I could easily see be turned into businesses, restaurants, and again, our neighborhood would be in some ways ruined. It is a safe place, it is a wonderful place, it's a place where we all invested care. This is a neighborhood where people care for where we live. And we can live for 24-7. And to have this restaurant here, a microbrewery, and the inevitable campus that will open, I just think that it will destroy a part of Akron that is wonderful and well preserved and well loved and well cared for. And we really hope that you will stand with the neighbors and not approve this. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Uh, Ms. Viviano? There was no one else that signed up to join online. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, given that, we'll close the public hearing portion and we'll open up to questions from the committee at this time. If there's any questions from the committee members? <coughs> I'm not seeing any. Any questions from any of the uh, council members? I see Nancy Holland, the ward person, of course, Mr. Malik has con comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, not so much a question, but uh, just sort of a wrap-up of where we, we've been. I want to echo something that I think was a, a running theme through a number of the comments, and I think it's important for clarity that we capture this for the record. Um, it is part of my practice as a Ward 1 representative to scan uh, the, the coming dockets for Planning Commission. I do so regularly. And, uh, you know, I, th I really can't speak to whether all members of council do, but this is an item that upon seeing it uh, on the, the future agenda, this is something that was reported out both um, b by the Ward 1 social media presence, but also at Ward 1 meetings. And it is very much to the credit of a couple of um, Mayfield residents who were not part of the legal notification process that comes out of zoning. Um, Abby, for one, um, that uh, you know this information was picked up on. Um, I feel it's an important moment to, for all of us to take note that our notification process is not always working. Uh, this is a location that I think, even if you don't live in Ward 1, it should be very familiar. Um, you know, when heading west from Highland Square before you reach St. Paul's, um, that kind of awkward intersection at Twin Oaks and West Market, we have all been through there. We've, we've been heading east and realizing, oh, I can't turn left here. And we've been heading west and subject to backed up traffic during, um, you know, different hours of the school day. Um, it's a tricky location to be begin with. Now, you know, I guess to be fair to all, this is not, you know, a, a residential property that's always been a residential property surrounded only by residential properties. But the residents today have made the important point from their point of view uh, that the other businesses or non-residential uses in the immediate area are of a particular character and that this is something very new. Now, I think that what we see both in the gallery today and online is that these are people who are very, very interested in this process. And you've heard from at least one recipient of the legally required notice that they didn't receive the notice until the day of the Planning Commission hearing. We should all care very deeply about that. <clears throat> this is a solid message that instead of going fast, we should go slow, that we should have further conversation and I think that that, you know, that is very much echoed in all of the other commentary too. This is, um, this is a unique situation. These are deeply engaged citizens. I think that they have presented some articulate arguments. And for that matter, I think that the petitioners uh, have come forward in good faith with an idea for an interesting property. This one tells me, go slow and have further conversation and examine this in a closer way. And I hope that we can, going forward as a city, work on this issue of notice. People should have an opportunity to know what's being proposed for their areas and an opportunity to get involved. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Malik. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you to all the residents who came down here today and spoke, as well as to the petitioners. Um, I want to echo most of the comments of my colleague, um, I think particularly around the notice piece. I think whenever we have this many residents, uh, and I have heard from a number of Ward 8 residents as well as some of the Ward 1 residents as well about this uh, project and proposal, I think it does behoove us to, to take our time and to really Really flesh out a lot of the issues here and then see what is the best outcome in, in our judgment as council. Um, I do have a few questions. Um, I think these are for the property owner for the folks proposing the project. Um, I know there's common ownership of 50 Twin Oaks and 1225 Market. Are there plans for 50 Twin Oaks? Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm so sorry, yeah, but yeah, those online won't be able to hear you unless you're right in a microphone. Would you be able to come up to your microphone? Thank you. They are uh, separate parcels, and uh, there is no plan whatsoever for 50 Twin Oaks to be anything but a residence. It happens to be Jamie's. Uh, residents, the applicant, and um, that's, it's a separate, it's a separate structure and it's a separate uh, parcel piece, yep. but. Okay. Well, I appreciate that clarification. Um, the second thing is the Market Street property, do you know the last time that was used as, you know, office space or had any kind of use? Um, so maybe a year ago. Okay. Good. So it hasn't been vacant for a very long period of time? No. Okay. Um, and then there was a question about uh, the overflow parking. Have there been discussions with the church about potential uses for parking? Uh, there was a meeting we had here a month ago or whatever, whenever it was, our first meeting. Uh -huh. And uh, the minister, I believe it's a minister, uh, spoke in favor of it. Um, and he mentioned that at that point that's that was that's been the entire conversation he just he brought it up sure. in a meeting just like this sure um and that was that was pretty much it yep but he okay. was he was he seemed to be in favor of the thing he was stressing the idea what are you supposed to do with these buildings when offices aren't the thing yep. and you know so he his uh he was, he was, he felt the pain, uh, he understood the pain sure. of having a place like that, trying to maintain it, and having a use for it. Sure. Because it's great to say, oh, we don't want, not in my backyard, you know, everybody, that's, that's the typical mantra. But, you know, what is it? Is it, uh, you know, does it need to be torn down? Does it need to be a job dollar general? Does it need, what, what do we do with it? Sure. Yep, no, I appreciate, appreciate it. it. I think that was that was all the questions, but I appreciate it, Mr. Scassio. Thank you. So just briefly, if I can just make a final comment. Yes, sir. Um, you know, again, I appreciate all of the comments that were brought forth here today. Um, I do want to note, you know, as a Ward 8 Councilman, I have worked a lot with Mr. Scassio uh, on some of his property in the Valley and appreciate the effort that he has put into that. And I know he also is a nearby resident on Portage Path as well. Um, you know, as I'm listening, uh, my, the first thought that I have is that in some ways it seems like it is two proposals, right? There's a restaurant in the main house and then there's a microbrewery in the carriage house. I wonder if it might make sense to uh, separate out these two proposals. Um, I know that isn't the case in the proposal in front of us, but it does seem like um, it's a lot to approve at one time. Um, and then uh, secondly, I just f really want to underline and highlight the point that my colleague made about notice. I think, you know, we've we've all got that message and I think it is on all of us to improve the way that we do do notice. Thank you. Nancy Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I guess I want to add this in, in sort of summary fashion. Um, Councilman Malik um, makes a good point and it's not a new one. Uh, based on the many, many, many conversations I've had with folks who've weighed in on this. Um, I, think, I think that is uh, a worthy consideration, the idea of, of looking at this project possibly in pieces. I think that that is wise. 
um, another thing that's been discussed with uh, all parties uh, to this proposal, the, uh, both the proponents and those who've come today to share their feelings about it, is let's talk, right? Um, what, I, what I think we can all agree on is that more information is better. More process is better. And perhaps once some of the concerns uh, are, are shared and cleared, as they have been today, there might be better and more detailed information in response. So I, I think that that's worth considering too. Thank you. Thank you. Linda Mobian. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to all of those who showed up for this meeting today. Uh, I think one of the things that I am learning from these two examples that we've had recently is that there needs to be an added step to this process. Um, these individuals that are here today are well connected, well informed, um, you know, individuals that probably more knowledgeable than many of our residents in the city in terms of getting information and utilizing it to bring forth change. But I think in order for us to have a process in place, and, and this is no reflection on Mr. Anarucci because he does an excellent job, it's just that when we look at the process of bringing in businesses or any kind of entity that's gonna change the nature of a community or a neighborhood, any fashion, I, I think we need to have a step in which we have a meeting with the council person, if if not anyone else. I mean, you could have anyone there, but in connection with the council person, who would then arrange a meeting, perhaps, for those that were not notified. You know, I, I listened to the, the individuals talk about not getting notices. Now, I know we have nothing to do with the slowness of the mail. I know that it can be slow. But we, we need to make sure that people are well informed of what's coming into their neighborhood. Because I know a number of times we've had situations where liquor stores and bars and things have been added to some of the some of the areas of our city where people are not well informed, they're not well connected, and probably would not have wanted these things in their communities. So I just think that as we move forward, and this is probably for the new administration, to think about the process that we currently use and how we can be more engaging with the neighbors to ensure that people are connected, notified, and, and can weigh in on this. Uh, because I'm sure if the commissioners, the members of the planning commission, uh, had known about all of this that we're hearing today, the outcome could have been different. So anyway, I just wanted to weigh in on that because I, as we have these situations come up, we, we are learning a lot of things. And, and I certainly want people to be well informed. And we certainly want to roll out a population in the city of Akron. And we want neighborhoods to remain stable neighborhoods. So um, that is just something for us to take forward as we uh, began to go through this whole process of reviewing some things and changing some things. So thank you very much, Mr. Chief. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? Mr. Uh, Chair. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, uh, Ms. Baylor? I'll talk to you after the meeting. I would just mm -hmm. like to add Public that um, I, had, I took an opportunity to go by the property and look at it. And um, upon hearing the uh, neighbors and the uh, concerned citizens, and they presented themselves so wonderfully to us and to the, um, what do you call them, the ones that are wanting to uh, construct this project. Um, I just would want to say that I would make a recommendation that we would take time um, obviously, there's a lot of uh, questions and things that need to be looked at. So that would be my recommendation. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for the questions or comments. Very good. 
With that, we'll invite everyone back this evening at 7 o'clock. We will repeat the process. The only major difference is the committee will make a recommendation to all of council, either in favor, against, or to take time. Okay, thank you all so much for coming down. Certainly appreciate your input, reference this project. Thank you very much. With that, we don't have anything else before the committee. We're going to, I'm going to recommend time on the balance of the agenda. Thank you very much. Our next committee today will be the Public Service Committee. Those committee members are Mosley, Kamer, Holland, Lombardo, and McKittrick. If we can give everyone just a moment here. Okay, we have all committee members except for Councilwoman Holland at the moment. Would you like to get started, Madam Chair? Okay. Madam Chair, we're ready here in chambers whenever you are. Chair, members of committee, yes, this is the Arn Street uh, off street parking for the Kim Mord Business District and the Canton Road Business District. Uh, this is the annual assessment. It's true cost. These cost uh, rates have not uh, been increased for uh, almost 10 years now. So we do, um, we do all those things you mentioned. 
and then we calculate them and then we send them a bill. So there's this, this assessment for this year was a little bit less than last, um, but that's just because of the level of service that was needed last year. And consent would be fine, ma'am. Okay, any, any questions from committee members? No, ma'am. Uh, uh, can I get a um, motion for consent? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, our next piece is a resolution declaring it necessary to improve certain streets in the city between certain terminals by providing street cleaning services and street lighting and declaring an emergency. Mr. Lowe? Thank you, Madam Chairman, members of the committee. Yes, this is our annual assessment of street sweeping cleaning and street lighting uh, there it's based on your front footage of your home it is based on the class of street that you live on i can give you an example a standard 50 foot lot in the city a residential pays about 47 dollars a half and that's your that's your snow and ice that's your leaf removal that's your sweeping that's if you have a dead animal unfortunately we pick those up so those are just the true cost of what we do based on that rate. And again, these rates have not been increased since 2014. So they will not change next year. Okay. All right. Any questions from committee members? Any questions from council members? Is consent okay, Chris? Yes, ma'am. Do you make a motion for consent? Motion for consent. Second. Motion second. All in Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, down at WRF, as we call it, we have three transformers that are 5,000 kVA. This takes the voltage from the 69,000 incoming and reduces it down to our 12,470 volt. Um, we have a couple of high voltage blowers. For the most part, these transformers then step down to 480, three phase for all our operation. Uh, we do, like I said, have three of these transformers. This one is now out of commission. We can run on one, but we do not want to get to that level. So we want to get this one, uh, we're, we're going to purchase a new one. So this will allow us to purchase this piece of equipment and bid the installation of this piece of equipment. Uh, we have some really strict criteria for the contractor will bid this. They must have experience with the utility company to handle this type of voltage. Uh, consent is fine on this also, ma'am. Okay, any questions from committee members? Any questions from council members? Seeing that, can I get a motion for consent? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Our next committee of the day will be the Health and Social Services Committee, and that will begin at 2.30. Those committee members are Amobian, Freeman, Baylor, Neal, and Holland. Again, that's the Health and Social Services Committee, and it will begin at 2.30. Thank you.